Very good. Very good. Smile for the camera. <laughs> we are trying to recognize as much as we can. We are not a US recognized ground nut operation where three people run 100, 1,500 hectares. We still use quite a lot of labor, so it's a, let's call it a semi mechanized operation. There's labor used and, and machine. Close to me here is the Reaper. It's a five time Reaper, which is actually mounted on a tractor and do the uh, reaping of the ground itself in Chichewa, we call it Gugalawusa. The varieties we are growing, there's CG9, CG11, CG13. We have got different mature dates. CG9 is 140 to 150 days. So that bread will go underneath the bed to cut the taproot of the groundnuts. It can only wait when the soils are wet, are moist. Or So as you can see, these are the sprinklers, machines for irrigations. Yeah, so it's not a full irrigation scheme. It's just a combination. Yeah, so we've gotten to our second destination. This is the Bale Farm. We're just coming from Lisandro Farm in Kasungu. Right now we are in Doha District. <laughs> For soya beans, for some of you who do not know soya beans, this is the soya beans, and these are the pods, soya bean pod. Yeah, so when it is maturing, it turns its leaf to yellow. Like this. We are having the delivery at the sand one, you have just seen it. And also, we are having the development, variety development right away here. And Charimbana with CG7, they are so susceptible to all the diseases. And also, the maturity time and CG7, it was almost five months, 150 days. Fungicide is so paramount to groundnut production. Here is a trial that we are evaluating varieties versus the fungicides. We have got three fungicides in here. The Cortoxacrolite, the Cupadem, and the Miravis Jewel. Still part of the valley farm. So we are just passing by the villages here. So now we are going to our next stop. Sure. Now, uh, 10 southern day smallholder farmers. Uh, we started with 5,500 hectares of groundnuts, but now we are at 10,000 hectares. Our target for this season, we are looking at 10 million kilograms of groundnuts that we are interested to purchase from these smallholder farmers. So we've got uh, two, three models. We've got the smallholder farmers and we've got the mega farms that are constituting almost 800 hectares of our portfolio. Uh, and we've got the in growers and out growers. Welcome uh, to this stand where we're looking at uh, soil health. Um, like I was saying to the other group, from 
uh, an agronomy point of view, uh, we usually say seed is the first thing that you need to look at. It begins with the seed. Uh, but I think from a whole value chain perspective, uh, you need to start with your soils. Uh, if your seed is right, everything else is right. But if your, your soils are terrible, uh, then everything falls apart. So for that particular reason, uh, soils, uh, one of the things that Pixas is keenly looking into. Uh, as such, we've got the soil health program that is going on uh, as part of research here at Bali. We also have uh, the same initiative with smallholder farmers out there, about 350 hectares from last season, which has jumped to 620 hectares uh, this season. So what we are promoting is what we call deep bed farming. Uh, this is a technology that was uh, released so this is the tobacco leaf up close but i don't think this tobacco leaf is very healthy that's why it's been left in the farm yeah so initially this whole land belonged to the press agriculture uh, this is a malawian owned uh, company yeah, but uh, since the uh, onset of the Matipati democracy, most of the uh, farms and the assets, they stopped uh, running. But now, I think it's just been taken over by the, uh, what I may call the private sector. I started running this farm again. Yeah, this is where we're having these demonstrations for groundnuts. And there's also maize. There's um, uh, this tobacco, as you can see, and also curing of tobaccos. So I think it's now being put to good use. And maybe in the foreseeable future, Malawi could benefit um, from this usage of land. The facility here um, is a six ton an hour line. Um, it is imported out of Plains, Georgia, America. It's manufactured by the Lewis Carter and family. Um, they are some of the best peanut machinery makers in the world. Um, it was installed two years ago. Um, basically, it is pre cleaners, cleaners, shellers, sizers, sorters, hand picking. And then you've got the laboratory in the front. So there were three sites available. The laboratory site, the factory itself, and the pellets outside. So we've entered the factory and what you can see is a very massive machinery for processing the ground nuts. So all those are shelled ground nuts. Right now, quickly, I just want to see the work that happens at the laboratory. This is the laboratory here. Uh, quality control, aflatoxin te uh, testing, and so on and so forth. So I'll go in the lab just to see what happens. It's an acceptable method of testing for aflatoxin okay. throughout most regions. But HPLC will be, will be a step up, but then this is an acceptable So what's in there? So that's a... Uh, it's an immunotherapy column, mm -hmm. so it has specific antibodies. Ah, I, actually, I wasn't. I was avoiding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. It has um, specific antibodies. What are you from? Uh, good nature, I'm good. Huh? Good nature, I'm good. In Zambia. Oh, in Zambia. Yeah. Great. So when you elute, when you elute the sample, the sample is just here. Mm. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. It will be that there. I'm here in Malawi. Okay. okay. So you're with the media or you just... Um, this is just for my personal. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I feel a little bit better now that... Yeah, it's my personal use. Oh, okay. But it's cheaper to But I may put it up. No of turning around and positioning ourselves not only in the intra-Africa trade but also in the global market that Malawi does produce the best peanut butter in the region and in the world. <laughs> Yeah.